Testing the cheapest welder on Amazon. Come on, man. What can go wrong? Ah, shit, that's hot. So check this out. I'm scrolling through my email, and I get an email from this company called Bezdark. They're like, hey, Matt, we saw your YouTube channel. You fix broke stuff all the time. We make welders. We can help you with that. We should be friends. So I was like, okay, well, I've been kind of in the market for a 110, you know, light duty welder for a while anyway. So I said, you know what? If you're brave enough to risk me dogging the crap out of your stuff, well, giddy up, send it on over. And they did. Thing, you know, just run through real quick. You know, it came packaged pretty well. It'll run off a 220 or 110, has the adapter to do it. Came with uh, hoses to run MIG, came with solid core wire, flux core wire, a stinger to run stick, uh, extra tips and Teflon tape, and I'll put some video in below. Uh, came pretty well, even had a carry strap, which I've already lost. But first impressions of this thing after using it on a couple projects, dude, I like it. And if somebody wants a cheap welder or they are just starting out, I'm probably going to recommend it to them. I kind of like this thing. But anyway, uh, I'll roll in some shots of me kind of trying to get the settings figured out on this thing. And I haven't welded in six or seven years. So get my settings figured out as well. But, yeah, um, let's talk about it and why you probably need to be welding a little bit. By the way, did I mention I'm not, like, a great welder? I can fix a gate. I can kind of do stuff. I can stick metal together. My welds are ugly, so y'all aren't going to be seeing a bunch of those. Um, if you want to, I don't know, comment below and tell me you do. But it's kind of scary. Grinder and paint makes me a welder, right? I think it's time we have a, you know, a little bit more honest discussion about this machine. If you're wanting to know, you know, the too long, didn't read TLDR version, uh, this best machine, best arc machine, it's a pretty good machine. With a caveat, let's not kid ourselves. You aren't here because you think you're going to learn something from me. This is a machine for people kind of like me. Machine for people that have either never picked up a welder, ever, touched one, or they're kind of like me, where you can fix something, you can make something, or you can modify a tool, or build a set of shelves, or something like that, but you don't, and absolutely nobody else considers you to be a good welder. And that's what this machine is for. It's for the beginner. Now, it does, you know, the, you know, gas solid wire MIG as well as the, the flux core wire feed. But one thing that stands out to me about this particular machine is you can run stick. You can run stick. And I think that's important. Now, don't get me wrong running this here wire feed is easy money it's cake it's cadillac it's the easy stuff to do and yeah you better believe i'm gonna run this flux core you know just as much as the next guy and the flux core makes it nice because you don't have to go and buy the bottles and the regulators and you know just extra consumables but i really 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 enjoy stick and if you're shopping for, you know, this welder or any other inexpensive welder, I really think you ought to give it a shot getting into stick. Your consumables, it's this right here, this electrode, right? And here's the kicker. You only need two electrodes, two electrodes. If you're watching this video, the entire world can be welded with two electrodes. That's a 6010 and a 7018. Now, 6010, that's going to be for your stuff that, you know, you and I come up against, right? Your scabby, nasty, painted metal. It's a violent, gouging, 
rod that'll gouge through all that crap, all that stuff that everybody says you shouldn't be welding on, right? Because, you know, we're fixing broken stuff, man. We, we we're, we're, you got to work with what you've got to work with, you know? Whereas your 7018, it's going to be a much stronger vibration resistant weld and it's it's going to look a lot cleaner, right? Your 6010 is a fast freeze weld and it's it's just not going to look as nice. Your 7018 is going to take a little bit more practice to run, but it's a slower freeze, so you know all of the ugliness has time to settle out and it's going to be a whole lot prettier and a whole lot more strong vibration resistant of a weld anyway. But it's going to take you some practice, and you got to have clean steel. you got to have it clean. But here's the thing. Once you get to where you can burn these stick electrodes, once you get to where you can weld stick, once you pick up a MIG gun, easy, easy. And don't be fooled. Don't be fooled what people tell you. Everything that you hear about it being incredibly difficult. You sit down with a machine like this and a $10 small box of electrodes. By the end of a Saturday afternoon, you'll be able to weld good enough to make repairs. You'll be able to fix the gate, right? You'll be able to make some sort of little artwork out of horseshoes. You'll be able to modify a special tool, you know. There's lots of times that come up, you know, like, for example, if you break a bolt off, sometimes you just can't get anything in there to it. So you take a bolt, let's pretend this is the broken bolt, right? You break it off and you take a washer, it's down in the hole, take a washer, put it on, on there, and then weld a nut and a washer to that bolt. It gives you something to get your wrench on there and turn it out. You know, there's just a thousand different things that open up. Once you've got a welder, it just opens up your options on what you're able to do for yourself by leaps and bounds. If you're just learning and you've never touched a welder before, listen to me. Go out and buy you some of these 6013. Let's see if we can get that to focus. 6013 rods. Your metal has to be somewhat clean, not spotless and not absolutely free of contamination, but somewhat clean. Knock the scab off of it, right? And then stick this rod in your stinger. It starts just welding up a storm, man. These rods are easy to run. They don't stick real bad. They, they The welds actually look pretty nice when you're done with them. They're really intended more for light duty work, but I'm telling you, get in there and this is what you learn to weld with right here. Get you a piece of steel, lay it flat and start running beads, burning this rod. And I guarantee by the time you've burned through a full package, of these 6013 rods. These right here, these are from Harbor Freight. It's $10 for two pounds of rods. Go and pick, pick you some of those up. Pick you up a box, a small box of these 6013s. Burn this whole thing. Just burn it on plate. You know, make one bead then run underneath it and make another bead where the toes tie into the next. This is called padding a bead. And by the time you're done with doing that, do that 10 times, right? 10 times. Take a, take a three by five note card piece of material and fill it up with padded beads. And then flip it over and start writing your initials on it. And then find some other little pieces of scrap steel you know, start learning how to do a, you know, a, a fillet weld, you know, and or a, a T-joint, you know, where you weld it across right here or like this or however you want to do it. And by the time you're done burning this $10 two-pound box of rods, 
you'll actually be able to weld good enough to get some work done. The, the learning curve on this is difficult, not hard. It's difficult, but it's something that you'll be able to pick up, you know, within a couple days. And I'm talking for someone who's never touched a welder before. And that's what this welder is good for. That right there is why this thing has a place. It's why it has a market. Now, I was going to take this thing directly out of the box and show you, you know, first, you know, first strike and all that. But you know what? I wanted to use it a little bit. I wanted to make sure it was actually, you know, worth something. Now, when you turn it on, you notice the fan. It stays on all the time. Look at that. I saved this part. The fan stays on all the time. It never shuts off. It never shuts up. And you get a few different modes here. This one right here for MIG. This is for your wire feed, right? That's for this. It can do lift arc TIG. It doesn't come with the stuff to do that. But hey, if you're buying this welder, you probably need to hold off on TIG welding anyway. See right here, 2T, 4T? What that is, is on 2T, as you can see, you press the trigger and it's running until you let go. Click that to 4T if you've got a long weld or something like that, which I don't use this mode. And I probably never will just because I'm not used to it. But you click the trigger and it keeps going until you click it again. That's what that is. That can frustrate you if you don't know what it is and you can't figure out why it's not stopping. It'll frustrate you. Choose your wire diameter over here. It came, as far as the flux core, came with 040 wire. As far as stick goes, man, it's, it's easy. It's this MMA, whatever the world that means, I don't know. But you just adjust your amperage right here. I don't know what kind of stick welding you're gonna do that goes down to 20 amps. But it claims to go up to 105 amps. I've got it plugged into 110 just a regular standard wall outlet. But it'll run 90 amps just fine. I haven't had any issue with that. These little guys right here, I've been burning them in the 60 amp range. You know, depending on what position, whatever, you're gonna need to change that a little bit. But anyway, listen guys, moral of the story. I think this is a pretty good welder for what it is. I don't have any intentions on upgrading it. I like it. If somebody came up and said, hey, I need a budget welder. I just have a couple projects or maybe it's somebody that says, I've never welded before. What I'd say is I'd probably tell them, go get you one of these, the best arc. And there's others that are just like it. You know, the, it, the Harbor Freight has a couple of them that are pretty decent, but they're also more expensive. So the, I'd probably recommend this one to somebody. I'd say, go get one of these under $200. Get you a one or two pound box of 6013 electrodes. Spend about three hours on YouTube learning how to do it. Just basic stuff. You know, weld.com, I think, has some really good videos. Uh, there's plenty of videos to figure out the nuts and bolts of what you need to do. YouTube is the spot, man. Uh, I wish I was good enough to be able to teach you something, but I'm going to let somebody that's more qualified than me do that. And I'm telling you, by the end of a weekend, you can actually, you'll you'll be well and good enough to get stuff done, to, to do what you need to do. And the, the learning curve is difficult. You know, it's when you strike these, strike these rods, you know, you kind of strike them like a match. You rub them, and then the arc strikes, and then you travel along, right? 
and they have a tendency to stick and you know it's it's frustrating but like I said, by the end of a Saturday, you've got to where you to a point where you can strike the arc consistently. You can keep it going, and then by the end of a weekend, you're making stuff that actually looks like a weld, not just a big goober. And then after you burn this entire box of sixty thirteen rods, go buy you some sixty tens or sixty elevens. I don't care which one. If if you you know. You think you're ever going to be running a welder that's not yours? 6011 is nice because it'll run on AC also. And then just pick some projects, man. And after you, after you burn the whole box of these 6013s, then start picking up this. If you want to spend the money on some gas, C25 gas and the, the regulator and, and all of that, you will be better off. But you can make quality wells with a flux core machine. And once you've figured out how to run the stick, dude, this right here, this wire feed stuff, hot glue gun for men. Easy, easy, easy. But like I said, do yourself a favor. Learn to run these stick electrodes first. And you'll be way ahead. You'll pick up TIG fast. MIG is going to be like, oh my gosh, you know. Especially the regular MIG, you know, the, the gas shielded MIG. It's going to be easy as cake, man. And you can make good welds with these with these stick electrodes too. Plus, you can do it outside and everything else. It's just, there is no handier welding process out there than stick. This machine right here will probably do most of, you know, your homestead repair tasks. Quick note, you're going to need a few things. A welding hood, you're absolutely going to need that. Long sleeve shirts, yeah, you know, the little BBs can, you know, from the spatter can burn you. But more important than that, you, you spend too much time welding, you're going to get burned. You spend a lot of time welding you're going to wind up with, you know, cancer from the arc, right? The ultraviolet cancer. And listen, do yourself a favor. Spend the money. Can y'all see that brand name in there? Singles. Auto darkening lens, man. Auto darkening. You know, we're not professionals. We're just trying to make our repairs. So get an auto darkening lens. You don't have to spend a ton of money on these welding hoods, but you do need to have one. Buy one of the cheaper ones from, you know, Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight, you'll be fine. With that being said, I welded for years and never had an auto darkening lens. So it can be done. Just accept the fact that you're not gonna, it's gonna be different. Gloves. I weld in my regular work gloves. Don't be an idiot. You probably should buy you some actual welding gloves. I haven't, and I'm not going to, but that's something you, you know, you kind of need to do. You're going to need some other things. An angle grinder to clean things up and cut metal. You need one anyway, even if you never intend on welding. You're going to need an angle grinder. A wire brush also. Another thing is, everybody wants those stupid chipping hammers. I don't even have one. I, I've had several of them in the past. You know, you need to bang away at the slag and stuff on the steel. Don't do that. You don't need one. This right here, a file. Half round, bastard cut file. Just scrape it along there. It'll knock off all your slag. You can kind of knock the BBs away. You can use it to clean with, and it's just a whole lot more versatile. And this will do everything a chipping hammer will, but the chipping hammer won't do half of what just a basic file will. So pick you up a file and a wire brush as well. See that down there? That's a fire extinguisher. I have three of them in this garage. You're going to need one. Mirror is optional. <laughs> 